Hello. Hello. Bonsoir. Oh my God, you're so loud, Craigery. Oh, Craigery is loud. Yeah, I turn him up, I guess. Uh, some time ago, I don't know. Hey gamers, welcome to a Dungeon Discourse, the show where we talk about our D and D show every Sunday. Um, how's it going? Welcome, everybody. Come one, come all. Um, we have a lot to talk about. It's we Thanksgiving. Do. Happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans. Happy Turkey Day and all that. Oh, yeah. Happy Turkey Day. Good. Be very grateful for the food and then fucking kill each other tomorrow when you go to Walmart because this is fucking Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, America does Black Friday in a way that, like, we don't over here, like... Very and sales, you guys gonna sure. cyber on Monday? Huh? And you guys gonna cyber on Monday? Well, the thing is, I need a new cyber PC, Monday. but like, I there's no way I can afford it even on Cyber Monday. I think so. Koiber is talking about cyber sex. Oh, yes. <laughs> also, Thank yes. You. Thank you, Ethan, for explaining my joke. Me and Anton are gonna have a good. have a hot date. Oh. Actually, you're gonna be there, Koiber. On Monday? Yeah. Any D and D on Monday That's is true. automatically an ERP session. Exactly. I think it was Tuesday we're doing that. Because you're stupid. Imagine yeah. blowing off Divinity when you're right at the end of the game. No, it's Divinity. not. No, because it's an afternoon session, motherfucker. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. He's going to be beamed out his fucking mind. Yeah, it's true. Oh, it's Monday. I'm fucking stupid. Uh, Divinity <laughs> brings out the worst in us. <laughs> yup. I don't know what it is. That's because you're playing fucking video games with Duke <laughs> and Dutch. Of course you're going to get bullied. <laughs> Oh, I calm down. That just allows you to do shit, Koiba. Sorry. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, but yeah, we're here for uh, the you discourse. We're going to talk about the ND, guys. Smile, any announcements before we get going? Nope. Koiba got snacks or? No, no that's discourse, a Sunday. Man. That's a Sunday bit, bro. Relax. Uh, it's great. I've got an extra week to prepare my bit, which also means I'm just going to prepare it on the Saturday before. Like Nick said, it's it's okay, gotta be wait. like after the bananas, dude. The bananas was like that was like a filler episode. We need something good now. You what do you mean? This was a that was a good bit. Being healthy, good bit. Being healthy fucking, by eating I a mean, whole fucking bunch of bananas. Yeah, dude. I uh had the greatest shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. I want uh, a banana uh, session don't... with Koiba, but just with on my. Wait, excuse me. Excuse me. Want a banana <laughs> session? With I Koiba. want you to have bananas throughout DD, but like I want the dips to get progressively worse. <laughs> I was tempted, I'm not gonna lie, I was super tempted. I've, just I've by seen the some... end, he's just there dipping it in ketchup. <laughs> I've seen some things at work, I've seen some things on my shopping, I've, I've got ideas. None of them are cursed, to be honest. None, nothing too cursed. I yet. want you, listen, one of these days, I want you to just have this like family size like bag of lollipops or something, and you just keep, keep fucking sucking on it. Yeah. Destroy the inside of my mouth for the bit. Just completely like ruin my teeth. Toxic waste, but you spend the time to open Or just like one, something fucking and random. And like, oh, I'm going to snack on this fucking, this fucking bell pepper now. Dry, you know? do, do the French uh, fucking <laughs> meme and get just dry baguette and just sit there eating a dry baguette. Here's the thing, right? The bit still has to be like good for me to eat, right? <laughs> No. Yeah. Well, we're talking about yes the no. show. We're You're now a comedy about, monkey. We're talking about bit. Well, I mean, it, I have got. You some finally have ideas. a purpose for dungeon select. You're no longer <laughs> expendable. To fucking listen bit. to us. No. Hey man, I've got I've got a good food bit. Anyone wants to sponsor? <laughs> Any food company wants to sponsor the food bit? Oh, Mackey's. So I have I have some real cursed shit in mind already, and I'm I mean, like, give them the comment. It's, 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 also, the it's at fight one financially like responsible to be doing this shit in these hard what the times. Are you gonna what? <laughs> what? It's a lot of wastage. We're there's a, a lot big, of wastage. We're in a here. big depression right now. Yeah, there's a lot of wastage memes going and on, and our economy is oh. also fucked. Wait, wait. <laughs> All right. Uh, quick. I mean, we have an announcement. Uh, this Sunday there won't be a regular DS, but Beanie is DMing a one shot. Where I'll be playing, Duke will be playing, and we also have Ismera and Bowdy joining us for uh, for a cheeky cheeky one shot. I don't I don't know anything about it, and uh, Ethan is not going to tell anything because spoilers. But uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Smile. Is it Hellboy? <laughs> it's not Hellboy. I don't think so. Hellboy's a charity. Would you? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the, I think the 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 stream key is in it, in the pin yeah, messages somewhere, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. So you got it. Okay, I'll do, cool, a, cool, I'll cool. do a, a cheeky little test like Sunday daytime just to make sure everything works. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I got D&D &D three days in a row this weekend. Kind of crazy. Oh, D&D &D weekend? Playing oh. uh, in Laura's campaign on Saturday, and then you're on shot on Sunday, and then Monday, fucking Tomb of Annihilation. Pog. 
I, I, I spent a solid three or four hours pulling one shots off of DM's Guild and going through them to find one that I felt was was good and everyone would enjoy. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So Dutch is gonna hate it. Dab, get fucked, idiot. As long as it's not anything with geese, I'll be good. Or ducks. It's not. It's actually a serious one. Mm. Mine was very serious. Shut Seriously, up. that's I fucking piss you off. <laughs> Hate that here. Okay, um, <laughs> so today, uh, I didn't have time to prepare discourse properly, like I normally would, because I had work and all that. Watch so, the World Cup. huh? Because you're watching the World Cup. I get you. I feel you. That too, but I was also working, so you know, that's what it is. Uh, but obviously, you know, we have some questions that got that I, that I submitted. We're gonna go through those, and I'm sure the gamers in here will have some questions for me, and I have some questions for them. Um, but to recap, last. You know, last time on Dungeon Select, uh, the party was still in Eldilon. They uh, still spent some time, you know, figuring out what to do with their next, uh, where, where their next adventure will take them. They have a couple of choices ahead of them. Uh, it started off with Elanzrin meeting up with his sister, uh, Loyaria. Um, uh, I think two years older than Elanzrin, uh, top of my head. Three. Two, two or three years older, uh, who was there to relay information that she was given by uh, the old man himself. Uh, father wasn't able to, uh, or it, thought it wouldn't be smart for him to show up since uh, the nature of the family... Uh, the family... Family feud. Situation situation regarding the override and whatnot specifically targets the male side of things it would be safe he thought it would be safer to send in case the nightwebs would know about that part already to send uh his daughter in his stead um <clears throat> so loyaria told you about um what it, how you, basically how the reason why this override stuff is happening in your dreams and you're writing it down is is somewhat related to uh, the elemental Lord of Earth trying to communicate with you. Uh, and she gave you, or she gave Lazarin a, a piece of obsidian uh, that had magic just kind of like seeping out of it. So it was very obviously a magical piece of obsidian uh, that she said he could use to potentially communicate with uh, with. The Elemental Lord of Earth, uh, which he has not done yet, so uh, we'll see uh, when that happens and what it will result in, too. Um, the party then had an invite for a nice dinner at the Weeping Mug, courtesy of uh, a man that goes by His Excellence, or in this case, tonight he felt like being a Peter, um, to discuss... Um, to, to make the life of the people in the party that are involved with this organization, the Crimson Lotus, a little easier uh, and address the entire group with a potential uh, mission since they're going to Segalia um, already uh, to retrieve an artifact from a church. Um, an artifact that turns out to be or could potentially be a, a, a tooth that belongs or belonged to uh, Asmodeus. The king of all devils. Um, so the fact that that lies in a church dedicated to Aros, the god of wisdom, uh, is dangerous and uh, should probably no longer be in this realm. Uh, so the party got a proper... And for those that weren't involved with Crimson Lotus, they saw a lot of familiar faces. People that they've seen before, like a, a Jolly, Captain Vera, obviously. Uh, but also um, the, the goblin... Waitress from the Red Fleet, uh, among other people, and and met some new people. One that go, one hulking Loxodon, that seems to kind of be the bodyguard of uh, His Excellence, as well as um, uh, this this bald, elven figure. Um, but yeah, another side quest added to the quest journal, I guess. Um, Not another one. Another one. Another one. <laughs> so with that said, uh, that will. There's probably a lot of things that we we could talk about here. Uh, first things first. Um, 
the reason you two are here is because Elazar has a lot of family shit going on right now, and Brooks is going to potentially have some backstory slash family shit going on in the near future. So I figured, hey, boom, let's put both of you in here together and Boys. fucking talk about it. Um, <clears throat> first things first, I would like to ask um, Koibs. Hello. Is... Now that it turns out that this whole override stuff, now that you know, you already knew, but now that it turns out that your family is closer, closely tied to uh, the Nightwebs, given their, their, their interest in the override and your family being directly connected to the override. How does that make Lazarin feel, man? <laughs> oh, he's... I mean... He's overall, like... He knew he had ties there, like, anyway. There's big ties, anyways, with just how everything sort of is. Um, doesn't help with the whole, like, hey, God, this whole Destiny thing, so something drawing us together, great. You know, he, he sort of questioning choices that have happened in his life a little bit, and being like, what was this, you know, is this someone else's plan here? What's going on here? You know, well, who who's moving these pieces? Is it just, hey, this is how the universe is going, or is there some fucking deity moving some pieces around here that, like... Ah, I dude. And like, over, once overall, like, once not, that gets revealed, too... like, two years from now, oh, it's going to be like, hate, oh. Hate it. <laughs> hate it. Um, he's not too, currently not too worried. There's a lot more on his plate at the moment that he's sort of worried about. It's one of those things where he's like, cool, just another thing that I'll deal with later, or I'll deal with by myself, or I'll deal, you know... That can, that, that can be sorted out later. Right now, we let's focus on the quest to hand. That's if I can not think about what's going on right now. <laughs> but he's fair enough. You know, he's he's he's, he's thinking about it a lot. <clears throat> so a lot's happened to the boy. Yeah, fair enough. Um, and then I have a question for Ethan. Is Brooks like nervous at all for like going back to his uh, childhood uh, home? I guess his childhood hometown. Where, oh, yeah. I mean, last time he was there, some shit happened. Oh, yeah. Brooks is incredibly nervous about it. I mean, it, like, a, to an understandable level. Yeah, no, obviously. Um, Knowing what we know. Like I mean. see, I debated as to whether Brooks would want to go or not. Mm -hmm. And I think what it came down to is, does he feel... Because I'm pretty sure that this is a no, but Brooks thinks that he can go and see his family without having to face other aspects of his his back his backstory and his past. Um, you know who's DMing you, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. <laughs> like there's a there's a disconnect between what I know and Brooks. Yeah, and what and obviously. <laughs> And he, in his mind, he's like, yeah, it's fine because I can disguise myself and nobody, like, nobody there has ties far enough, really, to reach and link me to these other people, as far as he knows. Um, And obviously, like, he has, at times, a strange relationship with his father, but he cares about his father and he, he cares quite a lot for his brother. And I feel like overall, as far as, like, stereotypical D, D characters go i feel like brooks has a pretty good relationship with his father you know given given how yeah, the majority mean, of, <laughs> of D, D backstories are you know yeah, it's, it's refreshing I, to read a backstory that isn't my dad is a dick or my dad is dead you know what i mean like it was it was <laughs> i wanted to play a character that went against type in a lot of ways i'm already playing a very unusual multi-class and in some ways brooks is very traditional and in some ways he's very against what you would expect of a like i liked i describe him as a barbarian monk because in my head thematically he's much more barbarian but he is like five monk one barbarian mm -hmm. and i feel like he if you didn't know the mechanics of D, &D he plays much more like a barbarian yeah it's like you do monk shit with him, but you kind of, like, flavor it as Hugo Gummy Smash, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, it's it's monk abilities, barbarian vibe. <clears throat> yeah. And a lot Which of his backstory cool is, like, is the same as, like, I wanted to go against that. You know, like, his home life is very complicated. You know, he's, he's a tiefling. 
he was adopted and there are reasons like if the party delves into that there are reasons why he were was adopted that maybe weren't the most charitable how much of uh like the adoption and his like actual parents does brooks know doesn't really good because that's what really i kind of remembers. assumed but i forgot if that was the case but i was like i mean yeah I'm, for long writing for brooks and I, I kind of wrote it in the sense of, like he doesn't know no he so i'm glad that that is also adopted true. very young yeah. he only it's why he calls kellos his dad because he only really remembers being raised by him yeah and growing up with his brother and I don't want to say too much because <laughs> the party haven't really asked about uh, it yet. So, um, well, what I'll say is, um, there's this overlying, like it's like Koib already said. There's there's this overlying, like oh, we're connected in some way, and the connection from some of the party members has been very clear. You know, we have Kess, Davian, Elazarim, and also Diagon. Very connected in the form of like everything has to do something they all have something to do with some kind of elemental type vibe and then there's Jackson and, and Brooks who kind of at a surface level don't seem to be con be like connected in that in that sense so I'm very excited to um it's delve I deeper into it, delve deeper into their involvement because it's like Koiba said like it's not like, oh, you guys you guys are all actually puppets for some overlying god that is just making things happen in a way. That's not really true, but there's definitely some kind of, like, destiny-type uh, vibes that, like, you were put together for a reason. And it's kind of, like, up to you all to figure out what that reason is. You know what I mean? I What really interests me is the, like the tertiary links to everyone like some people have really obvious links mm -hmm. but then there's like sub layers so like <clears throat> jack's not directly being tied into anything but then at the same time jack's has history with vera who's now part of the crimson lotus which now ties mm -hmm. into uh, quite heavily to like Dagon and cass and there's this weird sort of like you know like the the whole seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, Bacon. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, there's a lot of threads that connect everybody. Some of those threads are a lot more obvious than others, but everyone is connected to each other in some capacity, at least. Um, if it's not directly, you know, if it's not directly one to another, there'll be this, like, middleman that connects it to or something. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's... I really careful... Well, don't want to toot my own horn, but I've I've spent a lot more time going very deep into the how is this all connected type. Like, literally, the red wires, fucking... Yeah, holiday. Yeah, bored, like... And, <clears throat> like I said, like on a surface level, some connections seem a lot more obvious than others, but I'm just very excited to just go deeper and deeper and really, like, get to that revelation of, like, oh, oh, so this is, uh, I see... You know what I mean? It's and weird. the thing about that is, like, that could happen, like, that revelation can happen in a few months, but could also be a few years. Like, cause it's, uh, pff, you know what I mean? Like, pff. it's weird how many, like, unintended, like, tie ins there are. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we come across things that weirdly tie into things. Like, great example, we're going to get a tooth of Asmodeus. Right? Brooks has no idea what any of that means, but I sat there and I go, wait a minute, shit. Brooks is a Glacier tiefling. Glacier is Asmodeus' daughter. Like, we're basically going to get... And, like... I wonder if that's on purpose, guys. I wonder if I purposely made it nah. the tooth of Asmodeus. Nah, Asmodeus nah, I is wonder. just... <laughs> Asmodeus is just a, a, a demon, man. <laughs> nah, no, he wouldn't do this thing. You're not that good at it. I'm interested to see what happens with that because obviously I had to know Brooks's general lineage for mm -hmm. subclass shit. For subrace shit, I should specify. Yeah. But Brooks doesn't know that. Brooks doesn't know shit. He just <clears throat> drinks and hits things. Fucking hell. Yeah, because I, I like with Brook, you know, we're definitely getting some Brooks backstory soon, sooner rather than later, because you're going to Sigalia and, you know, that's where he grew up, and 
Um, uh, and I was like, okay, I want, I want, because we've we've had some, you know, Davin has like, you know, oh, I'm connected because of Kasuth. Elazar, oh, I'm connected because of the override and this and that and the third and oh, apparently Earth Boy, Kess has been very obviously connected from very early because of the fact that you know her her heritage. Diagon is looking for this like weird place where there's mountains, but there's also snow and there's fucking fire and desert and whatever what the if, fuck else. What if we're the place, guys? <laughs> what if we're what Diagon was looking for? We finally found her place. Shut with up. Us, where all the elements meet. If that's um, just like it's literally around the corner from Aldon, like it's a shop where the <laughs> elements meet. I'm still on the way like, here, but she missed the turn. Yeah, no, <laughs> so no, no, I, no, it's, uh, it's just a shop. It's like a bakery. <laughs> so with um, Brooks and um, Jax, I was like, okay, they are also connected in some way. It just hasn't been revealed how, and now is when we're gonna get an opportunity to see a little bit more about how Brooks is puzzle piece fits into this 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 thing you know what i mean like uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be dope it's gonna be fun there's gonna be a lot of shit uh the the whole like sagalia arc there because fun fact by the way campaign one early gamers mm. do you remember termaris yes and his map that he was looking yep. for yeah guess where that map would have led you guys Oh, yeah. where you're going now to get the helm of arrows? Dab, Ooh. dab, dab! I finally get to use that shit that I wrote oh, really? three fucking or four fucking years ago. Oh, I finally geez. get to put to use. Let's go, baby! <laughs> we could just steal a boat and become pirates. And I'll not fucking kill you. I'll pull the plug out of this fucking campaign. <laughs> yes, my character doesn't get to die in a horrific and painful way like he's basically destined to. <laughs> so I finally get to like, you know, that was something that I had prepared. Like that, the the, the whispering woods. Uh, it's for Maris, his backstory, he had like, oh, I need to find these map pieces and they're going to lead me somewhere. And he was very much involved with Aros and whatnot. So that would have eventually gotten you to go to the Whispering Woods. Yeah, but then he took um, a different crown. And then he took a different crown. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll freeze that Whispering Woods plan for a rainy day. And that rainy day has arrived. So here we are. So that's exciting for me because that's some shit that I've had waiting in the fucking wings for like literal years. So, I, you know, I finally get to... With that to use. Oh yeah. Which makes me very excited. I fucking man, we're back to what you're saying about like these connections we've had. I fucking hate that. That's has so many connections in the sense of just like this man has so much going on. He's already <laughs> so paranoid, and it's just like the hate, thing with Lazarus is, um... but like it makes like, it all makes so much sense. Like, like I genuinely <laughs> love it, but like looking character sort of outwards rather than sort of like looking at my character, character looking out, being like oh. If he knew. Yeah, and the thing is, with, like, with really? your, your backstory, right? It's like you get you gave me the night webs. I did. I gave you a lot. I... And I was like, okay, this is some new world order shit. And the fact is, you're in a new fucking continent. That that makes perfect sense for them to be like actively like oh, we want to get as much power there as possible. And they are not the over. They're not. They're not the end all be all bad guys, right? There's more shit okay. going on. You know, the elementals that are almost to the point of having a civil war against one of their own, as well as. Some this override shit. apparently being this like weapon that was used in the war between the elementals and the dragons and blah 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 whatever um and the fact that like you know the mystery of why did this mm -hmm. continent reveal itself now that is like the overlying thing but the night webs are very much <laughs> what i would like to think the night webs are is they're basically the your your polar opposites yeah you are connected in a way where it's like you're trying to stop all the bad shit from happening surrounding this override and they are like oh we're gonna use this override to make our own shit happen so you're basically it's almost like this weird like i don't want to call it a race but it's almost as weird oh, like yes. you're there's these two groups that are both like dancing around this this center point that is the override and it's a matter of who get the, gets their hands on it or who gets to resolve it first yeah. kind of thing. Um, which is very fun to write because, like, while I'm, while you guys, like, I, there's a reason why I, I, I there's, like, a real strict 
oh, what day is it kind of thing going on because I need to know <laughs> because yeah. every day that passes for you guys is also a day that passes for them. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, man, I love that. I just gave you a word and like, I did not think this would come up at all. I thought this was just going to be something that might come up once, be a really small arc and be a really small, like your family's going fucking crazy, right? Cool. It's like a curse that you got from a mine. It's just a gem you have to fucking put back, right? You, you know, you know, like... I have my head cancer. Like, Sometimes it's that's all I need, man. Like, like, I'm yeah, like, it's just gonna be some <laughs> shit like that. Where it's just gonna be some little fucking bollocks <laughs> that we'll do later. You know, be like some weird sub like side quest to fucking fill some time later. You know, whatever. That's why I put it there. You know, Nightwebs was the main thing. I was like, this is what Dutch is gonna focus on in case he's asked me fucking loads about it, right? And this is gonna be like, the big thing. And I'm fucking out of nowhere. I'm told, by the way, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, by the way, I wrote this down for like a lol. <laughs> no, no, hey. Is yeah, the the, shit up for I feel my like brain, as a DM though, those are the best aspects to pick oh, up. Oh, 100%. Like, my brain works very, like, weird. Like, if you give me this giant fucking novel that is a backstory, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can work with this. You give me two sentences and a couple of interesting, like, buzzwords, I'm like, oh. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know yeah. what it is. But, like, That's, my brain goes, I mean, Ooh. that 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 fits entirely to, like, writing backstory. Because I, feel I like... like... That's because... The less is more. The less you yeah. give me, the more room I have for my own interpretation and also, my own spin also, like, on things. Also, I'm always a fan of, like, yes, backstory to form a character, but I, it it's hard for me to get a backstory until I've played the character, because there's certain decisions that I'm probably yeah. made early on, that I've made super well on, that I probably don't agree with now that I would do completely different. Nah, that's, just, you know, that's just the interesting things, uh, getting to know a so new character and all that. like, you know, with that as well, it also comes with backstory, like, I'll have, like, my key points, but overall, I'm just like, I don't really know how this guy operates in his world. Like, he, I don't know how much of an ass. Like, okay, he's gonna be an asshole. How much of an asshole, though? Or, like, yeah, okay. Like, that's on. the thing with D&D characters, though. Like, <clears throat> yeah. you write a you can write a character as much as you want, but they <coughs> they take on their own little yeah, intricacies when you play them. Well, it's <sighs> like, like the general, like, sort of adage of, um, like a battle plan is only as good until the first contact with the enemy, right? It's like yeah. your DD character's backstory is only as good until you start playing it. Because then this character you've made could be completely fucking different to what you've written. You could have written, you know, you know, three thousand, four thousand words about this character, but the second you start playing, you go, actually, yeah, what I've like written you, is you, you make a plan. <laughs> yeah. You execute the plan. Your plan goes wrong, you throw the plan out the window. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's kinda how that goes. Um the character development yeah, happens. Uh, <laughs> people change. One. Like the thing, and oh man, I could I could talk about all like the, can, the intricacies right? and all of that shit forever. Oh, but like true, the the more you get into it, and you have a like, uh, it's very overwhelming right now. Mm. From from like a oh my god, we have so many like plot hooks yeah. that we could <laughs> fucking fucking do, but. <clears throat> Each and every plot hook, even if it's just like a side quest, like the whole Strahd stuff is, ha is a thing that's going on. And we'll also somehow give you another piece of that puzzle that is the overlying, you know what I mean? Like even even the more, the most like, well, maybe not the most like super side stuff. Like, oh, we in this town. Oh, there's a fucking, mm -hmm. fucking peasant fucking stealing me bread. Yeah, there's, there's like side but... quests and there's side quests. You know, it's like, this is the sort of going on. This, like, yeah. this is your subplot and then this is the filler arc. You know, it's that. Yeah, that's exactly. So we have the main story arc and then there's subplots that kind of like tie in with the main story arc and then there is the filler that's just like, oh. We had a beach day. We had a beach day. I lost, I, I lost my grandma's necklace somewhere in when I went on... To this cave, yeah, can like, you find like, it for oh, me? People are robbing my warehouse. Please go look. And then the party is convinced that this guy is actually a werewolf that's robbing himself. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, that was, uh, interesting. That one. We don't talk it's, about. I, that. We were so percent a werewolf, by the way. Yeah. No. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> but we were. We were. We were so convinced he was robbing himself just of how he was. Like every everything you gave us up to the point was like he is. And that was exactly himself. what I wanted to do. Yeah, so <laughs> because what would have been great both ways is obviously he, he wasn't. But if it turned out he was, right? Yeah. yeah. The fucking army would have had, because then we'd be like, do we tell him? Like, do we say, hey, you're fucking a loon? Or do we just go? This is when we find out that he hired those dudes. It's all oh an my insurance God. scam. Could you imagine? <laughs> no, yeah, but like, ah, man. There's so much just, there's so much shit, shit to come, you know? Uh, and I'm so excited for the. Uh, we just thought Dutch more creative than he is, that's all. Uh, I, I, 
Excuse me, Duke? Lord. Duke, you're getting... Ooh. What the fuck? Not a Why am I catching shots? Necklace. You're welcome, friends staining you uh, every Sunday, I guess. Bitch. Um... No, but like I'm excited. I'm really excited for for the Sigalia thing and and the party, mainly the party, to get to know more about Brooks and for Brooks to finally maybe open up, open up oh. a bit. You he's know what I mean? Pretty, he's been he's been a pretty Brooks tightly like, shut book. That's like sort of opens yeah. a tiny bit, but it's sort of like <laughs> Brooks like. No, Brooks is not really like lied to the party at any point. <laughs> No, but he's definitely not told us fucking shit. <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's one of those things that, like, the questions that people have ans asked him, he's answered them truthfully. But he's never... He's not one to tell the whole story. He's also, it's more or less, like, it's just detail <laughs> versus, like, yeah, this happened. Well, what happened? That did, what you just said. You know, it's like that. It's like, cool. You know, like... Yeah, he well, doesn't explain the intricacies of it. Yeah. And, like, he doesn't offer information willingly. No. Which is great because it's so it such leads into a lot of stuff for like why Elasrin doesn't want to open up to Brooks because like well, I'm not going to get the same back. How or this information should be like Brooks is very much a person who will trade for something, so I need a reason to why I'd want to give this to him other than I want him to know. It'd be like, okay, I want something from Brooks because that's what he expects Brooks wants from him, right? It's that sort of like grand, it, true or not obviously is see there probably some instances where it's true some instances it's not but very much that like okay why should i give over this because i know he's either going to use it against me or he's going to want something from me in return like he's going to want something from such, me. brooks has done such a good job of trying to convince himself that he doesn't care about the party mm -hmm. that he's convinced certain members of the party that he doesn't care about the party <laughs> Like, or he like he knows he cares, but he's just like, but do you care for us as people? Do you care for us as like, not objects, but like as, as just a means to make money or a means for yourself? And the thing is, with that, are, are we like, friends or are we work colleagues? With that, keeping up, with, like keeping up that like charade is a very like dangerous double edged sword as well, because there's going to be a point where the party could be like, what the fuck is this guy here? You know, fuck oh, yeah. off. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm That's I'm great. curious to see. Like I I expect. <clears throat> That the party is going to get a little more insight into Brooks as a as a person when they kind of get to know a little more about his background and and whatnot, and <clears throat> that could put could potentially lead to Brooks finally like letting his guard down a little bit around it's, them. You know what I mean? It's fun to play because like. Brooks has these little moments where he shows the party that he cares. But everyone sort of always leaves those moments after going. <clears throat> Did he do that because he cares, or is he trying to yeah. sway us in some way or another? Mm. And that's really fun to play because so far nobody's like called him out on that shit because there's just been other shit going on. But also like so everyone's that's sort Brooks, of like right? happy to let it slide. Isn't it it's like having that one friend who is a fucking mega asshole, right? But it's fine because that's just how he is. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's no changing <laughs> yeah. that. You're there, like, he's just an asshole. Sorry. Yeah, I get on with him when he's not an asshole, but he's an asshole eight percent of the time. So fucking, you know, like it, it's the thing. I shit. mean, I think it. I think it, in general, it's always hard for people to watch a charlatan or a con man go around flaunting other people's emotions and playing with them, and then take it. <laughs> anything they do at face value if the party see him constantly like persuading people and like trying to influence things here and there and not being up front how do they know that he's not doing the same to them duke does make a good point he says uh davian isn't fooled because brooks has absolutely had the least to gain so far but has stuck through a lot of life-threatening shit why, like he wouldn't like you know he wouldn't do it if he actually didn't care you know what I mean, I mean yeah. that's fair that's very fair and also I feel like Brooks wouldn't invite the party to travel with him to go visit the old dad you know what I mean no there's definitely so there's, there's definitely, definitely like, the, there's some cracks that are starting to show in this brick wall that he built around himself and I feel like all Brooks needs is a little push. There are there you know are these I mean? like, little, all you need like, is a little push and that wall's gonna just come tearing like fucking crumbling it's down. Like, you know it's I mean? like buying the fishing rods, right? Brooks isn't a patient person. Brooks doesn't like waiting. Brooks mm -hmm. bought fishing rods 
specifically t because he wanted to to find something that Davian would be up for because he's not really like a let's go out on the town person, right? Mm -hmm. So Bruce and just no one really questioned that. No one really questioned that Brooks was like, yeah, let's go fishing. Yeah, I mean, that's because also I feel like... fished in his life. Yeah, no, but that's also like, A, they don't fucking know. And B, because there's so much other shit going on, that small gestures like that tend to just kind of go under the radar, I guess. Yeah, you know I, mean? I, I think people pick it up, but people don't necessarily question it straight away. Yeah. So it's like, which is happening all the time. Fucking one of your friends just suddenly decides he wants to go fishing because he you know, like because he goes fishing with a friend. Not not the weirdest shit that's happened to us in like the past month. No, you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly. Like it's that like cool whatever. Like <laughs> maybe <laughs> just was a fight on the beach. We did. We maybe did. maybe to blow off some steam, you know, and go fishing. It's like Brooks is so like wholeheartedly trying to play matchmaker with Davian and Celeste, and nobody's like, why do you give a shit? Nobody at any point's been like, why do Because you... everyone just assumes, yeah, oh, he's just it's trolling. Because Brooks is a it's fucking a troll. Yeah. It's a troll. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's straight up like, oh, because Brooks is being a fucking... Cunt. He's being annoying. He's just trolling. Yeah, he's being annoying. He's trolling. <clears throat> because it's happened... It doesn't help that, like... Weirdly meta... Well, say meta in the previous experiences I've had playing D&D &D with Ethan has just been sort of matchmaker the episode man has been he's just been like let's make fun of these two people you know like your old campaign <laughs> of fucking spell slots and all that you know from from years gone that we all played in with uh cyrus him being fucking hooked oh. up with everyone like constantly that mean bullshittery that we had no everyone flirted with cyrus because it was funny Dude, it, loki, it fucking... bro, loki missed that campaign like actually yeah. it was fun but then also you have shit like you know it's just something that Brooks would do. Brooks is someone who, I Brooks guess, is... like, he likes people being happy, but also it's that weird matchmaker, like, cool. You know, he has that sort of persona of being the lad around town, right? He sort of slept with everyone type thing. <clears throat> you know, everyone knows that he's fucking slept with everyone, right? But it's that, like, of course, he'd be very open about people having relationships. You know, he'd be very, <laughs> like... Brooks, Brooks will do a nice thing. <laughs> but in stereotypical toxic masculinity is then like i can't just leave that as a nice thing i have to make some level of like comment or like yeah snark yeah because god forbid make... brooks is genuinely nice for once yeah exactly like <laughs> oh my you god know, like his... <clears throat> sorry you guys you guys yeah. will see when you meet his dad like his his dad's not a bad person by any means it's just a but like thing. his dad's also not the most like in touch with his emotions brooks grew up in a, a very like traditionally masculine household of people that are like yeah you're fucking welcome dickhead Bitch. as their way of being that they love each other happy birthday cunt yeah you know mm. <clears throat> happy Speaking birthday. Of... oh oh yeah ethan dm me the other day or like last week he was like wait it's Brooks's birthday in a couple days. <laughs> I put Brooks's birthday down on the fucking world anvil when we first started using it. I <clears throat> forgot about it and then went and checked and was like, shit. And like, Brooks has mentioned it offhand to the party that, oh yeah, at some point after we land back in, in Eldalon, it's my birthday at some point. But he's not actually bothered to tell them which day it is. And then yeah. obviously shit's happened, so no one's really had a chance to quiz him about it, and he's fine with that. But he's also he's so going to be to a person who either will bring it up on the day or the day after, be like, "Hey, by the way, guys, it's my birthday yesterday." If I don't think he would, I think he'd just let it fly under the radar. Maybe, but you know what I mean. It will come out, and he'll be like, "Oh <coughs> yeah, oh was that today?" Oh, or someone will say, "Do you have your birthday?" And he'll be like, "You have a good what?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, I I mean, I guess. When you get to Sigalia, dad would be like, happy belated birthday, dickhead, or whatever the fuck. And then that's when I mean, the party goes. depends how long we take to get there. Yeah, it's true. It's like yeah. over a month before we won't bother. But if it's like a yeah, week. If it's like a week ago, like, oh, hey, you know, like, whatever. We'll be like, excuse me. But yeah, so, gonna be yeah. like, you didn't tell us. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, can't I sort of did. God, it'd be fucking hilarious. And then like the darkest way, if Brooks fucking like dies, <laughs> or like went unconscious, like super on his on his birthday, he fucking goes down after a river of fire. <laughs> So now, because then Lazarus would be like, well, I got your birthday present, I brought you back to life, dickhead. So, I mean, <laughs> what do you want from me? But also, like, could you imagine, like, he just has the shittest birthday? Like, super just gets beaten up to shit, fucking nothing. Like, just Ethan's rolls are 
bad. He can't do. You know the worst shit. part? Brooks probably is okay with getting the shit beat out of him. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, that sounds like yeah. a good birthday to Brooks, to be honest. <laughs> and I think Brooks would be like, "You guys got a private fighting ring for me? Oh my god!" <laughs> you guys are all just waiting in my room with bats. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. When we say we got your pinata, we want to say you with a pinata. Let's uh, let's get into some uh, submitted questions, shall we? Oh yeah. Question We've got uh, broken ass man, Sir Duke thirty three. <laughs> For Koiba, you fall down a well once. Uh, is Elazarin feeling more secure having seen a family member and had confirmation that his family are okay in person? Um, yes and no. Yes, because it's obviously he does have like yes, they're not an overly like <clears throat> loving family, but they still like care each other enough. So it's good to sort of have that. He's in a bit of a weird state because he thought he was going to be seeing his dad, not his sister. And that kind of threw him off guard a lot. He was ready. You know, like when you're ready for like an argument and like, you say, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just doesn't happen. And you're there like, he's got, he's got this energy where he's like, I've got to fucking get rid of it. Like, he was ready to fucking have a go at his dad and it's his sister. And he's like, you're not the person I want to have a go at, but I do want to have a go at you sort of. So, uh, you know. I'm going to have a go at you by proxy. I, I'm just going to be snarky at you instead and sort of offhandish because, you know, it's like. Yeah. Um. But like overall, he's he's good to see. But also, he knows that like he kind of had to force this meeting or anything else. Like he saw was the one who had to be like, no, it's you did tell me shit. Like, give me reasons. Give yeah, me, that's, give that's me the deep. That's the way. That's the way it's, the family, family is well. functions. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the family very much is a case of you. You will fucking like schedule your meeting. You don't just show up at the doorstep and be like, hey, let's talk it. No, no. Schedule a meeting. This is when you're gonna meet your family for this many for this hour. Then Dinner fuck is off. It's at seven twenty three sharp. If you are late, you do not sit <laughs> at the table. Basically, <laughs> it, it sort of is a bit like that. Um, obviously not as much anymore, but it definitely business, is that very business forward. And the fact that yeah. you know, I mean, I don't want to, like they basically gave Elijah up to the church as well because they were like, listen, yeah. man, we're busy, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is there, is, you know, he, he does come from a sort of weird family of neglect, but he knows that, like, it's weird that he has this, like, oh, this is my job in the family. Like, my sister's the one that's going to be the heir to, like, the name. My younger brother's probably going to be doing some other bullshit that he gets to do. I'm the mid he's He is the middle child. Uh, and he is sort of just sort of knows, cool, this is what I have to do. Is This is just mm -hmm. my role. Um, the second part of this question we already kind of uh, went okay. over. Uh, is any of this going the way you thought it would be when we started out the campaign? You know, the override, night webs, all that shit. <laughs> um, some of it is a little bit. Like, night web stuff is coming up a lot more again than I thought it would, but also that once we start getting to it, and, like when me and Dutch had a couple like words early on about it, it's sort of going going how I thought it would. Override definitely isn't. That's fucking... <laughs> but I think overall, like, this campaign has already had quite a few twists. And I know there's so much more to come. Like, I know we had literally, like, that iceberg meme. We're, like, not even at the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. It's, like, the clouds above the tip. You know what the I mean? Is, that, this, like... campaign, dude, this campaign could easily be, like, twice as long as campaign one. If things go... Long. This campaign can also be easily split into, like, Camry 3 could be a continuation of this campaign if shit goes wrong for us. You know, this could very easily be a campaign where, like, hey, okay, you drop the mantle, right. What does this have in store? You know, there's a lot that can happen here <laughs> that mm -hmm. we can be, like, actually, you know what? This is the end for our characters let's see what they do with the world you know there's there's a lot here that could happen and yeah. it's fucking cool uh for beanie uh override was just like koiba gave me this like oh yep. yeah my dad started writing the over or my granddad or dad granddad, granddad, granddad originally started writing the overrides randomly on shit and kind of went crazy with it and that's pretty much it and yeah, then i literally, was like i, I just took that and and kind of implemented it into yeah, the we said Slightly so earlier in the, in the episode that I thought it was just going to be like cursed gem shit that like hey it's just turning people mad because it's a cursed item right or whatever put it back blah 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 here's your filler arc not hey by the way <laughs> it's the centerpiece of the campaign of like this story this main story arc you're currently on yeah, smiley know, face it's kind of like my brain just kind of went I love it hard when I read that I was like oh I was oh. so welcome for the shit name I gave it as well for the lols well I made it make sense from yeah. a writing perspective. Yeah. Well, like, you, That's it's what not it's been like. revealed yet, but I made it make sense. <laughs> That's good. I can't even, I think it's because the song I was listening to at the time was writing like was a, called, like, Override or something stupid. Wouldn't surprise me if that was the reason. like a Tom Riddle, I am Voldemort sort of bullshit. 
<laughs> no, 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 it's not. It's basically, well, I mean... River O. <laughs> it, uh, I don't want to say, but like, no, it, 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 I mean, it makes sense from a writing perspective. It's gonna take someone over. Uh, for Br for Beanie, hello. Brooks doesn't Brooks seem at all concerned with his wanted status. Is he playing it off, or does he simply, or does it simply not bother him? A little <clears throat> bit of both. The actual being wanted doesn't fluster him at all, because in head, in head, in his head, he's like, okay, well. We only really have to deal with that if we're going there, and there's powerful people here who can vouch for the fact that I wasn't there, and it clearly so you think... couldn't have been me. I have a really fucking solid alibi. That's until the fucking bounty hunters show up, dude. True. Like, like, like in his head, one, like that one fucking bounty hunter that you've already seen oh, both this and last campaign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in his head, he's got a really, really strong alibi. The party knows that it couldn't have been him, right? So the actual like legality of it isn't a problem. The fact that it's not the face that he uses with that name terrifies him. Because that name, Danik Heldenreath, is tied to him, but disguised, using his disguise kit to appear as someone else. Yes, someone, you know, he, someone you can't change put, your put it structures. together, you know what I mean? Like somebody, but yeah, the fact that it's a drawing of him and not his false persona means that it has to be someone that a knows what he looks like and b knows that he has a false persona or has figured that out, which is a very small pool of people as far as he knows, which means there are very few people. <clears throat> that it could be and all of them are tied into his backstory oh dude i'm not gonna say shit but <laughs> uh, yeah. not to mention that like his fucking his former employer is a fucking butt boy for the fucking crimson lotus <laughs> did i do that yeah <laughs> so brooks is now a bit like has he always been <clears throat> Did they know who I was before I got here? Was I scouted like some fucking shit tier footballer? You weren't scouted, but the way that order the Crimson Lotus functions is once somebody appears on their radar, and the entire party appeared on their radar the second they got involved with uh, Kess and Daigon, they did their research. And they have a lot more connections than than it may seem a lot of people that they pay off to 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 be double agents for them and whatnot you know what i mean they are the crimson lotus as an organization it is it's like it's like the end all be all of thieves guilds they nobody knows they exist and if they do they pay them enough to keep their mouths shut and if people know too much they disappear if you know they exist, you know I mean? you're either on their side or dead. Yeah, no, it's literally, literally. So, and like, there's a, like a lot, of, like they're like this urban legend. It's like, it's like you play Skyrim and people are like, oh, the thieves good is not real, it's just a myth. It's like that. Like, there's a this like urban legend of like, oh, Crimson Lotus, among like the, the, the law enforcement, but then there's gonna be people that's like, you're full of shit, dude, there's no way. Like, it, they are really good at what they do. The fact that they have a, a god of trickery helps with that. Like, on their side, helps keep them a little more low profile and under the radar. Um, but yeah, like, it's, you know, I enjoy that organization a lot. <laughs> uh, so, which is. So, when Daigon and Kess in their, like, Station Zero basically said, yeah, we'll join, smile. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, here we go. <laughs> I have a reason for this group oh, to be no. prominent throughout the entire campaign. Let's go! Because <laughs> they could have easily said no. Yeah, they really sold their soul to the trickster gods, huh? They really did. We've fallen out with one secret society and fallen in with another. Yeah, it would appear so. It would appear yeah. so. That yeah. half the party are, like, officially members of now. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> two, out of, two out of six isn't half, Dutch. <laughs> oh, yeah, they don't know about Jax yet. Shit, you're right. <laughs> oh, the worst <laughs> part is that's believable because he's in Vera's pocket. <laughs> Her prison pot. Um, any thoughts on I... uh, on the group going to Sigalia next? Looking forward to it? Ethan? In or out? Out of character? I'm so excited. Brooks isn't necessarily <clears throat> the biggest fan of it, but he's facing his fears. I'm so excited. There's and Sigalia actually... is also really cool for me. Sorry to like interject. Yeah. Like Sigalia was the first area I ever designed in this world that we now play D and D in. So, I remember I remember talking to you when you were making the map for Sigalia. Yeah, that was like way Long before. That was that was before DS was even a thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, Sigalia is fucking cool. I love the me and Bell have managed to interject some sort of like Celtic and, and Gaelic inspirations into Sigalia by talking about like folklore and that sort of thing mm -hmm. which you know quite heavily ties into the faith to it I think it's just a great like I like it as an area I think there's a lot of cool things going on there I, I wish we'd had we'd seen more of it so now we really get to plus Dutch has to roleplay Brooks' dad and Brooks' is bro nice. Brooks's brother. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try and put up an Irish accent. You <laughs> <laughs> come to Dutch oh, playing games. This is where we I find out. <laughs> this is the only reason yeah. I give Brooks an Irish accent is to be a dickhead. True. That's not the only thing you do just to be a dickhead. True. True. Um, we also have some questions from Laura. Uh, oh, Koibi. Yeah. That's me. In and out of character. First thoughts on his first experience with the Crimson Lotus. Uh, yeah, out of character, love it. I think they're great. I think it's great sort of storytelling uh, group. It's really, like really good for a lot. A lot you can do with it. I think it's a really nice tie into Campaign One with Elsinil and like the shit that we did there. I really, really like that. That there is obviously like the continuation of that story and seeing how far it's got. Ah, I think it's really cool. I think it's good. In character, <laughs> Elijah fucking hates this group. He's not about it. He doesn't like it. He doesn't trust it. He doesn't. He's like, this goes wrong. Like, it's too. No. Perfectly ran. You know what I mean? He's like, this is waiting for a slip up that they are not waiting for because they think everything's all tight. They're like, yeah, everything's fine. No, it's good. Don't worry about it. No, everything's fine. This doesn't go wrong. This goes wrong. You know what I mean? Like, Elijah is super convinced. Like, Either they're either it's an outside force coming in that they weren't prepared for, and they've gone, oh, this watertight like pocket dimension shit we've got going on doesn't work because people can plane shift, lol, lol, like there's magic available if someone powerful enough really wants these items. <laughs> someone on the inside is gonna fucking turn against them or he's hired already turned against them and is working against them fully, like super high up. You know, the number two is actually, you know, some other fucking gun. Yo, not my task, he's badass. Leave him out of this. <laughs> No, but in, in, even like you know what I mean, like you know what I mean, like someone, someone hung up his thing. Yeah. Uh, he's just he's had dealt with a group who thought everything was watertight. <clears throat> stuff goes wrong. His thing. He's now got another group who thinks everything's watertight. <laughs> it's like shit is gonna go wrong. Okay, yeah, like it just. Is. doesn't have the best like. He's not the track record for it. He's this fucking thing, paranoid. Then, like that then, as well. Like he's then, super paranoid. Of course he is. He's stealing with trauma. Super overly paranoid as well. His paranoia is so big that he almost on purpose does shit. So like, we'll, we'll, you know, him being told by the group, "Hey, don't go off by yourself," and him constantly going, "Prove off by me right, motherfucker!" Like, it's like it literally, that. It, it it literally is a prove me right. And every time he gets proved wrong, almost to his own paranoia, he's just going, "Well, then why do I have to bother then?" Because clearly, then I'm he's sane enough where he's like, "Well, clearly it's in my own head then," but then he's also like insane enough where it would be like well i'll do it again because i've got to be right eventually it just wasn't this time they're just still waiting they're trying to give me false sense of security and then they're gonna hit me he also like he knew the second he didn't write a contract down he knew that he'd be followed he like or be listened to that was one of the things he's gonna say he was gonna be like i debated about saying it for a long time and i i kind of glad i didn't he's gonna say oh just how are you gonna know if we talk You'd have to listen into us every conversation. Isn't that not very trustworthy of you? You know, he very much, he was tempted to say something along those lines that very much like, 
hey, how would you know if we said anything? If I just told someone and you had no connection to them, had no idea who they were, just told someone on the street, how would you know? You know, it's that, like, that level. Obviously, he's not going to test it because he's been told his fucking <laughs> friends are going to get, like, fucked over if he does so, Yeah, anything, literally, right? like, he Brooks, super... Gus, and Diagon are now your collateral. Su super, like... But in a way, that's almost like he has that over them now in his head. If Because his paranoia is so fucking bad. He's like, if this goes bad, I can just start saying shit and it's not on me. It's like, I yeah, see, that's fine. I, I can just, like that's, I feel I can like just, that's a trap. I can just do a sending spell somewhere. How are they going to know who I sent it to? Yeah, I feel like that's the trap of like... Gods. Smell. I don't think yeah. Peter but, would actually fucking... I went not tell doing any like cast Diagon or Brooks because of a Lazarin. I think there would be stone words exchanged. But if no, Lazarin... that was pure, that, 100% that was bluff. 100% that was bluff. But he knows that that like, you know, they care about them. So at least if he's convincing enough, at least that'll, that'll put some form of like, oh, wait. Like they don't even have to believe him fully. As long as there's that lingering doubt of like, oh, mm. what if he's serious? That's enough. Because that, that, that means there's you're there's not going to there. fucking talk. Because you're not going to fucking enough, risk three lives of, the, of your friends. More than enough paranoia in Lazarus to not talk, but also he's, again, he's that, uh, as Duke still says, intrusive thoughts when he goes home. It is that sort of like, well, hang on. It's that thing of Test, Lazarus it's... makes a mistake, and it's now, okay, please write down the names of your family members on the sheet of paper. Yeah, Don't very make much, another mistake. But very much, like, also he's testing, like, he'll be testing boundaries. Because he will, because he's already been seen that, oh, okay, you're following us. Okay, cool. Right. What's the next level, Ben? Are you listening to every conversation? Are you listening to what's this happening? Are you watching me do these things where I know I'm alone, but actually, no, you know. There's a lot. It's a lot there. I'm <laughs> super looking forward to it. <laughs> but also, like... I both know, like, in our character, I know that I'm going to have to, like, tone down my fucking shenanigans, right? The, I, it derails too much and all that shit, right? But, yeah. like... <clears throat> it also just fucking it the party also being angry at him plays into his own delusions yeah because yeah. he's like okay you guys do care but do you actually care it's very much like do you actually care about me or do you just care about what i do for this party or like what i'm doing here and then he's like well i could be with any other group of four people five people you know and this is to be the same result what's going on here but also he's like these people he's also super fucking vulnerable and like i need people near me please someone help <laughs> like i, I mean, like these people these people are nice i oh, please don't leave me please 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 don't take I, me <laughs> i've told know. dutch how brooks plans to get back at a lazarin so <laughs> don't be <a> cunt <laughs> you already bullied this man so much um and he keeps doing dumb shit Dutch, if you canonize Gen becoming some kind of arts and bang Nelson, you're reinvited to my birthday party. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm excited though, because like you guys going to the Empire mm -hmm. does give some opportunity for some kind of like maybe some kind of tie in with characters you've met in the previous campaign, just to tie the two campaigns a little close together as well. So hey, man, like, we already had Peter Riz, Riz, you know, everybody's Peter favorite man, man. guard of the guild, guild hall. Yeah. Uh, we've yeah. already had, um, you know, the Elsinil thing. Uh, have you cool had any other tie-ins? We had a cool mention. We had a brief appearance from the Empress. No. A like brief, projection. like, yeah, a brief projection of uh, yeah. the Empress. You had a Nicole mention, uh, mentioned, mentioned, true. But, um, you know, obviously there's this... There's, there's, I like... Continuity is really important to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I want the world to be alive and move around the party. Uh, instead of it all just kind of standing still. If the party yeah. is not there. So it's been 30 years, give or take. Um, you know, the people that the party then did business with moved on. Um, and and had, a, you know, with this new continent showing up, a lot of the people from Cal's ear also had opportunities to do bigger things. Um, you know, fuck knows what the Archmages are up to now. You know, what is, what's, what's all, what's all fucking Goldie doing nowadays? You know what I mean? Mm hmm what is Archmage Brass Bend up to? What is what is fucking uh, the Theonel up to? You know what, what are they doing? Shit like that. I you know what I mean? Theonel. Because <laughs> he was hot. <clears throat> so like I, 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 the fact that you're going to Sigalia, yeah, there'll there'll be some like at least some like mention of of you know. <laughs> you no, know, and there is you know 
if you're going to like if you're going to end up in Daramuth, there is a um oh fuck, what's the inner shop called again? It's been so long. Fuck. Pocket dimension? No, 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 no. Mystic spoon. No, fuck. Oh my god. Dude, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh Actually, the no, Arcana Emporium? Right. Yeah, Arcana Emporium. Emporium, yes, that's it. Yeah, like there's a there's one of those in Daramuth, right? So like who knows? Um Oh wait, was it Daramuth where the party also had that like bar, yeah. that big big ass mm. fucking bar? Yeah, true. Yep. The Red Dragon, something I believe I called it. I oh, fuck. I need to. I, I need to look at my fucking Daramuth documents <laughs> just in yeah, case man. you guys end up going there. Need to look at fucking everything like that. <clears throat> if you're fucking camping one night, tell boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, mm. But yeah, I, I I I like that shit. So the fact that you guys and the fact that you guys are going to a place that I specifically designed for like a backstory of a character mm. that never happened very early like literally the first 20 sessions of of, of like dungeons like camping one or some shit uh it's exciting because that shit's been on ice for like four years and now i finally get to thaw it yeah 30 years has passed since so things have changed a little bit but you know overlying mm. theme is going to be the, very much the same True. so you know you might meet some members of uh Tremaris's family or something that'd be cool and cute Little, little Furbolg tribe vibes, you know? I'm interested to see what happens when Brooks goes into a hallowed ground forest. You'll be fine. Bring your fucking bucket! <laughs> um, for Ethan, another question from Laura. Uh, how do you think the dinner went? What are your biggest concerns in terms of fallout consequences from that dinner? Brooks's biggest concern right now is that Eladrin wandered off again. He's mm. really angry about it. He had the, like, in what in his mind was a gentle and concerned conversation that in actuality was throwing a wrench at the man and going, don't fucking walk off on your own. And then, like, three hours later, he does the same thing. So he's, like, pissed about that and trying to find an outlet for that that isn't just hitting the man repeatedly. We never he... know. Dude. Maybe this time it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> but that type of violence isn't the, that type of like persuasion as it were. Or like intimidation. It ain't gonna work for us because he's like, okay, you do he's you. Already but... dead inside. Basically. No, I mean Brooks thinks it went fine. Um but that's Brooks in general, like, he's, he always assumes the worst of people, hmm. but the best of situations. He comes out of that going, yeah, that was great. <laughs> Fucking everything's fine. Oh, yeah, holding a grenade and, and, and waiting for it to explode. Yeah, that was great, guys. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, Dickhead. he was like, he'd looked at what it had done and he was like, yeah, I'll probably be fine. We've got a cleric. fucking guy um you say, i fucking hate you so much sometimes man <laughs> for fuck's sake i i gave you a barbarian with a god complex and oh but it's, it's it's your time of humbling has come in the form of <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna learn a lot about yourself over the next story arc and you're not gonna fucking like it. <laughs> oh, the time, to, the, the story arc that humbles Brooks has finally come, and I can't fucking wait. We're gonna yeah. have some like really deep character reveal, and Brooks is gonna be sat brooding, thinking about it. Kess is just gonna wander over and be like, you know, once I accidentally dropped a trifle off a third-story building, it's like the dumbest shit to try and relate to what everyone's going through. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. It. Or be something super, like, way more traumatic. And like, dude, this is my trauma dump, not yours. <laughs> Back off. <laughs> this is my trauma dump. Go away. Yeah, yeah, so honestly, he's going to get his hand blown off for good after that. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. You know. Well, hey, Could man. If, basically, no, what you do is you don't do it the first time. The second time. <laughs> Make him feel confident. He a finger or two. <laughs> the third time. That's when you start losing arms. So, uh, just a question. Is Brooks ambidextrous? <laughs> I mean, he do wield, so yeah. What's his forge? What's his forging hand? His forging hand. Yeah, like when he writes. Like, can he eat, forge and write equally as good with his left as with his right, or vice versa? 
I always imagined Brooks writing with his right hand. Mm -hmm. But given his penchant for sleight of hand, I would mm -hmm. like to think that he's thoroughly capable with his left. Okay. Just, uh, you know, just wondering. Just in case. Just in oh, case I know Duke's not here. Mm. But I want to mention this because he's in chat. My you know how funny it is to make that man just roll random saving throws and not give him any and context? Just not tell him. And just watch him. <laughs> and just watch him fucking go sicko mode. That's the fucking best thing. Dude. Hey, how about when you uh bring out a letter and just go, hey, here's some handwriting. <laughs> how about having a one shot where you ask everyone to roll a d20 and then don't tell them why? Yeah, this when you roll D100 and you get a DM saying, like, you are the saboteur, and like, what does this mean? <laughs> I legitimately, everyone in our, in our one shot group for Sunday, I was like, yeah, so just roll me a D20. I rolled a 14, smile, right? 14? I know. Yeah. Duke rolled a 17. Ooh. <laughs> well, um, dude! Hey, dude. There's so much cool shit coming with this campaign, mm -hmm. and I can't talk about any of it, and it pisses me off. <laughs> well, you know? Well, you need to like you need a D and D like confession, dude. You know what's great is that like in two weeks' time it's our Christmas break. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, we're like, we're weeks, gonna get like, yeah. we're gonna it's get soon. two weeks. I mean, so we're three. missing this Sunday. Yeah, but we've got two right? more sessions, <laughs> which then means we've got the fourth, the eleventh, and then are we we normally take two weeks, right? So are we playing on the eighteenth. Yeah, we can play on the 18th, and then we'll take the week of the weekend skipping, of Christmas, the and then the weekend of New Year's, we'll take yeah. off for some shit, right? Yeah, true. So the yeah. next session Which back would be like January 7th or whatever the fuck that, or 8th, yeah. yeah. So we've got three. three so we've got three got sessions three to sessions, go. Three sessions. Yeah. Which should, if, like. Oh, yeah, that it, means we can end on like a spicy cliffhanger or something, dude. No, in on... my brain, that's like it, three sessions that. is like getting to, like, Brooks' hometown. Well, it depends, right? Like, are you going to do the forest first, or are you going to go Brooks' hometown first? I mean, I. Oh, I, I, I mean, it depends where like, we can get teleported. Literally, it depends where we get teleported. <laughs> but, like, in my brain, if we're going to be teleported near the Whispering Woods, then it makes sense to go get that thing, come back, send the. Crown I'll probably back. be dickhead and give you, like, a choice. Like, I have access to Why? these teleportation circles. Pick one. Smile. Why would you do that? It'll be like. Cleric it's Rassi literally. It's or... The entire campaign has been a, a fucking build your own adventure. Kind of thing. It'll be it'll Someone. be like Cleric's Refuge or <laughs> um, Darimuth. And we'll have to choose. But fuck middle of nowhere. Probably. It's just a random I mean what we could do <laughs> is we could go straight to Natil. Yes. Get the tooth. Then that we tooth. need to take that to Yorick in Stonefall anyway. Yes. So we give that to him, and then... But you don't need to, we gave you a few options, right but now. since you're going to Stonefall already anyway, that's, that yeah. makes most sense, right? Yeah. That's the one that sticks in my mind. I didn't... I didn't... <laughs> without looking at my notes, I can't remember the others. I think he mentioned... He mentioned fucking Hammer, Dawn... Which Darimuth, is a A couple other places. He mentioned... Hammer Dawn's not a shithole, it's a mining city, bro, it's Park. <laughs> There's this, like, big-ass oh, fucking like, like, mural is dedicated not. to... The D&D party that existed before Dungeons Select existed that saved Hammerdon from a fucking d d devil invasion it was sick as fuck, dude. Oh, yeah. A Lazarin will bust his nut if we go to Hammerdon. It's badass, bro. I don't think he will. I think he'll be like... Man like... Uh, Ooh, fuck. What was, Duke's fucking, what was Duke's fucking half-orc called again? Shit. Man like Dolgrim! Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Man like Dolgrim, we really could go... Go vibe with the statue. No, I think... If, like... <sighs> Depending on what the choices are, what I see logically in my head is Natil, Stonefall, Whispering Woods. Now, nah, Whispering Woods, we just fuck off all die, TPK, who gives a fuck? Let's go. Bam, 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 bam. Shotguns. I feel like a Lazarin's suicidal tendencies are coming through into Koiba. I don't know what you're talking about. No, it's called it's suicidal tendencies that are coming through into Lazarin. Around. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm out <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions for me, by the way? Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because Why? I'm a masochist. Next question. What did I, fu what did I fucking do to you? <laughs> okay, what, what am I writing that I do to you? you gave me How have I wrong? You, you gave me an open-ended backstory. 
Oh, damn. Yeah, that's true. Oh, damn. That's literally all you did. You gave me I an know. open and backstory that I could really no, inter it's interpret funny. in the way that I wanted to interpret it. I just... Man. This fucking writing's been great. It's been good. I'm fucking Thanks, in. Man. I hate it. I hate how much I'm in. Because <laughs> I'm there, like, my off time just thinking about, like, what well, else you could talk about this? It's not like fucking walking to work. I'm there, like... Oh yeah. Listening to me, like a song will come on. That I'm like, this still relates to a Lazarus. It's still like in the Lazarus song. If we did like the playlist, right? Like sort of, <clears> whatever. <throat> and I'm just there, like, do do. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. We should do that. That would be a fun idea. Oh, do like a do like a um. Uh, cool. uh, we have a dungeon Character select playlist. Spotify because we did a fucking podcast version yeah. there, right? So we'll like make like playlists in on that spotify playlist. account that's like oh lazarin's playlists the question is Kess's playlist money money really, money gold. Be fun. do we Dude, do songs that's actually do we good, do yeah. songs that remind us of the characters anything or do we do both? what we think both. the character would listen to a mixture of both a mixture of both, mixture of both. Uh, I, all, I have a brooks playlist all i have my a playlist ones. that i listen to to get into the headspace it's just yeah. Irish folk music. It's surprisingly <laughs> not. It's fucking The Witcher 3. La, 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 la. Just on loop. Just 10 it hour, is, 10 hour it's, version. It's a mix of like really like Lahi. aggressive <laughs> rap music. And then there'll be like just like there'll be fucking token playing and then it'll be on shuffle and next up comes fucking like Longish John singing a pirate shanty. No. Nice. Okay. We should do that. No, that sounds like a fun idea. I know uh, this is just really fucking depressing, and then suddenly it's just not. It's like really overly well, happy. You know when those songs that are really happy, but then you listen. On repeat. Yeah. You know those songs that are really happy, but then you listen to the lyrics and you're like, oh, this is fucking awful. <laughs> like, what? What? <laughs> that vibe. That's a good idea. Or it's, I'll, I'll, or put it's in, just I'll put it in a group. See if uh, people are down to do that to like make or a little playlist. Just, uh, any any song that has the word gold in it or money. It's also coin to your Witcher. Hey man, um, money, money, money. Also coin to your pirate, but only gold digger. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> dude, that's a, that's a double one because he likes money, but his family also digs up doors and shit, dude. I'm so smart, guys. Uh, steady. Um, I have a question, Dutch. Oh, go on. Are you planning to like practice an Irish accent or are you full on winging it? I think oh. you mean a Scottish accent because that's what will probably turn into half of your <laughs> sentence. Irish is hard, man. Irish is very yeah, hard. Irish is hard. Irish was Especially really hard like... for me. I had to listen to a lot of Irish content and mimic it. And the thing uh, is, what I could do is just make them not have Irish accents. Yeah, you're adopted, lol. Your Irish accents from your fucking tiefling oh, heritage got fucked. I would hate that so much because Brooks was adopted. <laughs> lol, you're adopted. <laughs> like having a kid raised in like Chicago, but originally is from fucking London, so he's just there in fucking surrounded by like massive American buildings and like fucking oh, fucking in and out in Chipotle. Oh my God, I'm not All right, Chipotle. geezer. <laughs> Hi! Hi. <laughs> oh, uh, hey. All right, no questions for me. With that said, I think uh, we can end it here. You know, we had a we had a good good chat. Uh, normally, yeah. I would leave off with a teaser for what's to come, but since we don't play DS this week, how about Ethan leaves with a little teaser oh, for what to expect next month? Imagine showing me the the unprepped fucking. Uh, it's just no like two warning. sentences, bro. That's all you need. I kill a D and D um, party for the lols. We are going to be doing a one shot that is tied into, uh, loosely tied into uh, the general storyline of the Sword Coast. Oh! Uh, we are going to be following a group of adventurers that are uh, originally from. Oh, yes, I love that place. In Sword Coast, D&D lore. On the Sword Coast, yeah. Have you never traveled to a ba 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 ba? No, I went so, to you... uh, ba 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 babas though. Like the, the, the ba -ba close ba -ba -ba close town. Is that the original nearby. name? Like in the uh, whatever languages they speak, no. that's not common. Uh, we're we're gonna be following a group of semi recent graduates from the Waterdeep Academy for fine adventuring, as they go on their first sort of heavily responsible. Oh, does that mean I need to quest? be smart? No, it just means that you've been taught how to adventure, so you're not a complete Bet. moron. I Number know, one, I, I don't know what I want to play yet. I've no idea what I want to play yet. Uh, apparently, by the looks of it, there's going to be two Eladrin. So, I the thing is, I want to make such a shit house character, dude. 
I never make shit house characters. I want to make a shit house character. Make you know? a Wilhelm. No, I fucking. I'm gonna like make nobody into a proper like character. You know. Hey guys. <laughs> Yeah, like like that. Nobody, do you know what? Nobody gives really like rogue vibes. Just like you're there. Yeah, I love Zinzi. We scream. She's great. Oh, yeah, she's from this town. I have some books. I'm so I'm glad I'm not fucking playing this fucking one shot, dude. Did Goddamn. We, did we perma kill Zenji or? Uh, yeah, you just started Flax right? I'm pretty sure. Mm hmm. Or one of them. <laughs> no, you, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure she's dead. Nobody's like a warlock of Zenji. <gasps> Why'd you do that to the man? Man, it's not in it's not in thingy. You can be a warlock of Yeah, I mean we're we're going over to Forgotten Realms, so Oh that would be the Witch King, technically. It's a one Zen if you wanna, Zenji. If you wanna... I, I gender bent Zenji into a woman. Smile. Okay, counterpoint, they're incredibly powerful and can manifest whatever gender they feel True, like. True, bro. Yo, give me the hot de undead Vecna. Oh, dude. Vecna one is of, undead. One of you Banach convict. guys? Thoughts? Female. Banak is uh, canon 5e. Canon yeah, he is. Forgotten Realms. True. Banak's great grandson. Banach he was Beasley. like, he's literally, Banak is like such a bitch in like oh, canon. Yeah. He is, like he's he? nothing. I made him way cooler than he is in actual D&D &D lore. <laughs> yeah. So I, I nearly gave us a... Oh, that there reminds was... me, I'm so excited for when we do like the fucking Morwen one-shot, bro, where because she's like dedicated her life to the, finding all the remaining Banach clones. Oh my god, it's gonna be so much good. It's gonna be so much fucking fun. Oh, fuck! So she's got one-shots planned. I have like a list of five one-shots relating to the campaign one character so we could do at any point, yeah. I'm waiting for the core episode, my guys. It's gonna be so good. Oh, when we go to the cool court court? case, time police. The t the thing is about the time police one. I played with the idea of of that being like a proper like uh, heroes of exile get sent to different points in their timeline. Oh my god! To like look back what? at what they did Fucking... in a in a as a way to like convince the time police that Nicole is meant to still be alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. You mean like a fucking Christmas Carol? I guess. No, it's also it's also like. <laughs> The fl it's the flashback episodes of like. Hey, it's like, oh, it's this show's 100th episode. episode. Here's a bunch of flashbacks to all their yeah, it's stuff. For the it, is, yeah. it is the. We couldn't get the cast in this week because of filming issues. Here's yeah, a flashback yeah. episode. Yeah, here's a montage. I like literally, like, I had the idea to do that for the last, like, uh, anniversary one shot, but I was like, that's. I need, a, I need way more time to prepare that shit. We, you know so, I mean? so this time we're doing a set, like, a fairly serious one shot. Hell yeah. I'm gonna throw it out there. If we have the next time we have a session where we're not playing DS, I've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles prepped and ready to go. Let's go, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I've, All right, I've got, I've got some one shot to go. We've been we've been waffling. Um thanks for watching everybody. <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh see you this Sunday for oh. some uh D D shenanigans, a little what cheeky cheeky one shot. Bro, cheeky I I mean I'm play I'm playing nobody. I'm doing it. You've settled on it? Yep. Are you doing like Zenji Warlock? Uh, I don't know if I want to be a Warlock, but I'm definitely making that character, you know what I mean? I feel like nobody would make a really great rogue. Just like, you don't notice them in the room, you start talking about something and just out of the corner. Hey guys! Hey guys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Have a good night. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Bom bom bom. Gone. Bom bom bom. Bom bom bom. Do 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 dum. Now slowly like fade out. Just like. <laughs>